Let's check in on the Flyers, who uh, made an interesting decision today. They handed out a three-year deal to their goaltender, Carter Hart, and uh, a lot of people taking a look a little deeper into this deal. We will do that now with 97.3 ESPN.com Flyers insider Kevin Durso. He joins us right now here on a Sports Bash Monday. What's going on, Durso? What's going on, Mike? How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Uh, the Flyers uh, squeaked into the day here today. Uh, it seemed like all these <laughs> other things are happening, and here are the Flyers making a little bit of news today. And I would classify this as pretty interesting news considering uh, Carter Hart is the probably – you know, the most important player on the team. He signed a three-year, $11 million contract today with the Flyers, struggled last year. What do you make of this deal? Who uh, who wins out in this one? Well, before I get into that, I got to say, because you said they squeezed into the day. If I, I'm currently talking to you from Reedville, Virginia on vacation. <laughs> if I could have, I would have bet my life savings on a deal happening between last Saturday and this Wednesday because <laughs> it's just how it goes. So I'm not surprised something happened. Uh, right now, probably Carter Hart wins the deal more than the Flyers do given last season. But I think that this has the potential to be a win for both sides, especially if Carter Hart gets back to the level of play that we have seen from him in the past. If he puts this year behind him like he wants to and gets back to the form he had two seasons ago, he had a 24-13-3 record, 242 goals against, 914 save percentage. That's right up there with some of the best in the league when you can really put that together in a full 82-game season on a regular basis. Last season's numbers weren't good, and he knows it, and he's his worst critic. He's the harshest critic on himself. He puts a lot on his shoulders. And he just talked with us a few minutes ago and basically said he took a month off from being on the ice, took a month off from everything around the game and took some time to clear his head a little bit. And that might help him moving forward. So for now, certainly the cap hit doesn't look great in comparison by some of the other goaltenders out there who have signed deals coming off of their entry level deal, who have gone on to be greats in the game. It's kind of on par, to be honest. I mean, even down to the Rangers just signed their goalie, Igor Shesterkin, to a deal today, and his cap hit is $5.65 million. And he has 43 starts in his career. Carter Hart has 95. And there's kind of a big difference. So there's a guy who gets a bigger cap hit for better performance so far, but you're taking the same kind of risk that he continues. You're putting the bet on Carter Hart in this case. This is the foundation of your success group. You know, this is the foundation of any success your team has is on your goaltender. So you're putting the bet on Carter Hart at this cap hit that he's going to turn it around and be better. Yeah. I mean, so obviously he didn't have a great year last year. The numbers uh, for him, nine, 11 and five, 367 goals against 877 save percentage in 27 games. He had to be shut down at the end of the year. Is it a little risky to sign up to with that type of three-year deal? I think it's more a commitment, to be honest. I think it's just more of a commitment that he's your franchise goalie and you're putting a lot of your hopes behind him. I even I told you back when Martin Jones signed that even though this was the guy coming in as a backup and even though he had some rough, you know, three rough seasons in a row and you're kind of looking for the same bounce back kind of project, if you will, with this goaltender – that the bet was the bigger bet was probably still on Carter Hart because that's the guy you're basing all of your success around. You want Carter Hart to start more games than Martin Jones does. So if you're going to hope that Martin Jones bounce back, bounces back and maybe does it in 25 to 30 starts, then okay, you can put some hope into that. And it's not as huge of a risk as saying, well, the goalie who makes 55 starts really needs to bounce back. So that's what the bet is. I think that this is a commitment to Carter Hart. And he even said, it's nice to know that an organization trusts you and believes in you. And now he's got to go out and do the job. And that's what this is about now. He's got the commitment from the team, and he's got to go out and show that the first two seasons of his career that we saw are the real Carter Hart and the guy who we've come to expect to be in between the pipes for the Flyers for the, you know, for the years to come. Now, if, if he goes back to the guy that we saw in the previous season, it, this turns out to be a great deal for the Flyers, no? Oh, absolutely. If he, if he bounces back to that form, then absolutely. And, you know, there's been an emphasis this entire offseason on giving him – probably, you know, more of a support system, better defensive coverage, more structure in front of them. That's what they had two years ago. They had defensive structure. They had veteran leadership. They had guys playing for each other. The room was really tight. They were a fun group to watch, and that's why they had success. And Carter Hart's numbers just kept getting better and better because of that. And then last season, you watched all of it disappear. No structure. You know, one guy on the defensive side leaves, and leadership's gone, and it seems like accountability's gone, and 
all these other things that go in the way of things. And big part of it too was Carter Hart's confidence kept taking hits. And because of that, his performance continued to suffer as a result. So now I think you set yourself up for hopefully giving him a better team in front of him so he can do what he does best and not have to try to be, you know, Superman in goal basically and do it all and can just focus on his job and trying to make routine saves and make it much easier on himself because that's how he built the foundation of what he's done in those first two seasons of his career as opposed to this last one that we just saw. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at what happened to him last year, a little bit of it, I guess it's twofold. Some of it has to do with the fact that the defense in front of him was not very good. Do you think that is the bigger reason why the numbers were what I read just a moment ago? It's definitely a big part of it. I would say that the other key factor that comes into that as well is the lack of practice time they had, because especially for a goaltender, if you're struggling and you really want to try to clear your mind and get some focus, they tried to do this. They tried to give Brian Elliott a few extra starts in there to see if they could get Carter Hart some extra time in practice to clear his head a little bit, to just focus on certain areas. And they ultimately had to throw him back in two starts later because that's the way that it kind of went with having Brian Elliott as your starter. Now they're going to try to give him not only that, and he cited it too in his press conference, they're going to have six preseason games, which they did not have last season. They're going to have a full three-week training camp. They're going to have a lot of time to get ready for the season and kind of get all of these things worked out. He's having, by his account anyway, an excellent offseason in terms of working on some areas and trying to just get more ice time. I think that all of those things played a factor. He's not a guy for excuses, so he's not going to sit there and tell us that all of that was the problem, but I think that that was a key problem for him, and now – these reinforcements on the blue line, in addition to all of the other things that come into play now that they're kind of going to go back to more of a normal season structure, should certainly help him. Yeah, I, I guess um, the, the the improvements that they have made in front of him, right, should help him get uh, get him in the right direction. Yeah, and, and like I said, this is very clearly them backing Carter Hart at this point. They're not saying look at last season and we've got to find a new solution there too. I mean, if that was the case, they probably would have signed somebody who challenges him even more than Martin Jones does as a starter. I don't think they did that, even though Jones would like to compete for some starts and Carter Hart's welcoming the competition. I don't see it that way. I see there, there is a clear one too in this case. And by doing that, you've made changes that reflect that he's your franchise goalie and put more emphasis on getting him help. And I, I think a lot of these veteran guys and these leaders, we've talked about Cam Atkinson at, at the forward position who plays a really strong penalty kill game, which can only help Carter Hart on the back end there. The other defensemen, Ryan Ellis, Rasmus Ristolainen, Keith Yandel, these guys collectively are at least new faces. And I know we've talked about Ristolainen before as kind of this polarizing figure when it comes to defensive play, but the other two certainly can, as veterans, can just help calm him down a little bit or help him stay focused on the task. And they're all, by, by all accounts, they all can move the puck pretty well. Yeah. So they can do some of that things where it helps, it maybe helps them defend less, as Chuck Fletcher said, defending less and maybe keeping some things out of their own zone. So this way, the workload isn't too overwhelming for Carter Hart. It's not drastically overwhelming where he's got to face this wealth of shots against and he's not not making saves because, you know, the save percentage just evens itself out after a while. When you're making 88% of your saves, and facing 35, 40 shots a game, you're going to give up five or six goals. That's just the way the math works. So hopefully they can get back to what they had two seasons ago, which was they, they were averaging giving up maybe 25 shots a game, something in that range. You give up, you know, you make 90% of your saves, you're giving up one or two goals a night, and that's it. And you have a great chance to win every single time when that happens. Now, Carter Hart said today that uh, they are, uh, they have targeted certain areas where he needs improvement. He didn't want to say where they are, but where are they? Well, glove hand side would be one of them for sure because he got beat to the high glove an awful lot last season. I, I wouldn't be surprised if part of it is also just working on some things in his structure in general, maybe just closing off some of the small gaps that he's able to leave sometimes that shooters can take advantage of. You know, Maybe it's things under his blocker arm or under his glove arm, You know, the five hole. You could work on a lot of those areas. I don't think he has – a particular glaring weakness outside of that glove hand that was really on display last season. I mean, pretty much everybody knew to start targeting it after a while, and that's how they were scoring at such a clip. But I, I think that he could work on pretty much just about everything, but that's definitely one of the areas I would say that he targeted specifically. All right, uh, so what is now left to do for the Flyers this offseason? There are more moves up their sleeves, uh, or uh, are we kind of looking at a finished product leading into training camp? Well, the one move that's really left that I can say with certainty is Travis Sandheim needs a contract. They, The team filed for arbitration uh, in, in the recent days. That hearing is set for August 26th. Personally, now that you've got the Carter Hart deal out of the way, I don't see it making it to August 26th. I think they'll have a deal in place 
before then at some point. It's just a matter of getting all of that finalized. They have approximately 4 to $5 million in cap space still left to sign Sanheim. And right now, I mean, if you went and looked at Cap Friendly, which is a great resource that people use to kind of see what cap space is like, it's going to say $4 million. That's not entirely the case. There's a forward on there who's on the cap right now who will probably be in the AHL when the season begins. So you can probably assume 4 and a half to $5 million is what they have. So they've got to make a deal with Travis Anheim. And then from there, I've been asked a few questions on Twitter about it too. Are they going to try to look forward beyond this season and to next offseason with guys who have expiring contracts? And I just don't know that we're going to see that much. I mean, if they're going to target anybody, they'll look at and see if they can do the year-ahead extension on Sean Couturier or Claude Giroux perhaps. But I think that this year is really kind of a we'll-see kind of year. They're going to wait and see what all of these new pieces do for the existing pieces that they had, how it all blends together, how it all works and then kind of see if they continue on this path, whether they continue on making further changes or whether they kind of bring back a lot of the same guys because of that fact. I mean, you saw a lot of their deals for new players. Martin Jones, Bristol Linen's got a year left. Yandel was a one-year deal. Nate Thompson was a one-year deal. These are one-year kind of we'll see how this goes, and we can adjust down the line if a young player is ready to go or if they decide to make it go a different direction after this season. They don't have many long-term commitments. In fact, if Sandheim signs a multi-year deal like I think he will with, out of this uh, pending restricted free agent status that he has, the Flyers only have 10 players signed beyond this season. So they're good. They're setting themselves up for a very busy offseason next year. It just depends on whether a lot of these players that we see on the ice next season are departing or if they're going to come back on new deals because it was such a success. All right. Uh, well, the big news today is Carter Hart signs a three-year $11.9 million contract. Uh, this one could be a risky one or it could prove to be a great deal, depending on which Carter Hart we get. And uh, I-, I guess that remains to be seen. There was some – he had now he had been talking to a sports psychologist for years, right, and he has stopped doing that? I believe so. That's that's what I've heard as well. He uh, he mentioned in his press conference today, he's mentioned how he's working. He's got uh, Kim Dillabaugh, who is the goalie coach for the Flyers, who he works with during the season, and then he works with a goalie coach in Edmonton outside of you know at, when he's home in the summertime and he's really been able to I, I think he was in philly a lot last off season to be honest and now he's been able to go home he's talked about seeing friends and family he's talked about being able to kind of take that pause that he needed to mentally before getting back on the ice but he did mention that both goalie coaches the one with the flyers and the one personally for him at home are on the same page with what they're trying to work on and how the workload should be. So he's got that working for him right now for sure. I do, I do find it ironic. I mentioned him, his home in Edmonton. You were just talking about the Gretzky story. So it's really funny that we're talking about an Edmonton kid signing the contract right. on the same day that Gretzky was traded. Yep, uh, that uh, happened on this day, 1988. And by the way, a listener tweeted at me that Edmonton ended up winning a Stanley Cup after Yes, that. they did. Yes, they did. 1990, 1990 yes. 1990, yes, I forgot about that. And then <laughs> uh, and I did mention, though, that they were in some financial problems. That's why they had to make the trade for the $15 million because the owner had some financial issues. Uh, right. So they needed that money. They win another cup, but have been pretty much since that cup in 90 yeah. down the toilet. They're getting yeah. There. They're getting there, though. Yeah, I mean, they've got a lot of talent. There, there's no question. They've got talented players. They've got probably the best player in the world right now in Connor McDavid. But, you know, one player doesn't win you the Stanley Cup. That team that team that Gretzky got traded off of that eventually won again in 1990 had a lot of Hall of Famers on that team. When you think about who stuck around beyond that 88 season, you know, Mark Messier and Paul hey, Coffey and guys like that. 30 seconds, does Eichel get traded? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that th- that that just keeps that story just keeps evolving more and more. And it sounds like he's he's it sounds like he's done in Buffalo. I'm going. I'll, I'm going to be in like by Buffalo all next week, and I'm like all amped up to listen to <laughs> sports talk radio up there. I want to hear what happens here, right? Yeah, absolutely for sure. At Kevin underscore Durso for more on the Flyers off season, check out 97.3 ESPN.com. All right, enjoy the rest of your vacation, man. Thanks, Mike.